So I get a ton of questions about what is the best sort of way to use cold therapy to improve performance or recovery, what are the optimal times, how to do it, etc. So let me just kind of cover that in this video. So basically, if you want to improve performance, like acutely, then yes, pre-cooling the body can definitely help. Now, I don't think we should be pre-cooling the body um, on a consistent basis during training because that, unless you are training to the point where the increase in your core body temperature is preventing you from training the amount of time that you want or need. So let's keep that in mind. So like if you are working out, let's say in the summer and you can't run as long as you typically would want to, then okay, pre-cooling the body um, makes a lot of sense. But if you are pre-cooling the body in a way that's going to prevent the normal rise in your core body temperature and the normal induction of mild dehydration, well then that's something you don't want to do because the part of the benefits of exercise are the rise in core body temperature and the induction of mild dehydration because the body adapts to those acute, let's call them harms. And so you become a better performer later on. So if you're constantly pre-cooling the body and you're never getting those, you know, rises in core body temperature and the induction of mild dehydration, well, then you're not going to get some of the benefits of exercise. So you don't want to always pre-cool the body during training unless it's preventing you from having like a good training event. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. Um, yes, if you are like in a competition, then pre-cooling the body actually makes a ton of sense because you're going to get the acute benefits and, you know, that's not preventing you from having adaptations because it's, you know, competition isn't all the time, right? Whereas you're training a lot more. So keep that in mind. What is the best way to sort of pre-cool the body? Um, there's many different ways. I personally like to utilize, um, cold salt water. So essentially I'll use Redmond Relight and then I will pour that over. So basically Redmond Relight is an electrolyte, okay? It's got salt, potassium, magnesium. Um, and basically you can put that in water. I use a magic bullet to mix it well, really quickly. And then I pour it over ice. So if you consume about, you know, three fourths to a liter of that, that's in ice, that's cold then that can pre-cool the body. So when you when you pre-cool the body, the goal is to basically drop core body temperature somewhere around about a half a degree Fahrenheit to one degree Fahrenheit. If you overcool the body, this is where you can get into trouble where using ice baths or cold plungers. If you go, if you drop the core body temperature below 97 Fahrenheit, you will actually reduce performance. Okay. So there's just like everything, you can go too far, too low, or not enough. So there's always a sweet spot with these type of things. So ideally you drop the body somewhere between 0.5 to one degree Fahrenheit. So somewhere between like 0.3 and 0.5 degrees Celsius around that is, is the goal to basically pre-cooling the body. So like I said, cold salt water, basically refrigeration temperature salt water will help cool or pre-cool the body. Basically you, you do that like 90 minutes before competition um, and then within an hour of consuming like three quarters to a liter of that fluid, you will drop core body temperature by about half a degree, um, which is the goal. Uh, glabrous skin cooling. So glabrous skin would be like the forehead, the cheeks, the ears, the palms of the hands, the bottoms of the feet. Those areas will cool the body down fastest. So a lot of people are inappropriately kind of wrapping their neck with like a cold towel to cool down the body. No, you, you want to cool down the face, the ears, um, the palms of the hands and the bottoms of the feet. So cooling can also, so, no, so besides pre-cooling the body, which you can use, you know, cold water on those areas, or you can actually buy like um, basically cold wraps or cold towels and just buy them on Amazon and like put them in ice water, cool them off. You can you know, wrap them around your forehead like during a run or something. If you're running outside in the heat and it's too hot and you normally wouldn't be able to do that run because it's 85 degrees and it's really sunny, you can buy some of those cooling wraps, you know, dip it in the cold water, wrap it around your forehead and your ears. And that will also prevent um, the radiant heat from hitting those areas too that will really heat you up fast. So, so, that, so basically that also kind of blocks the sun from kind of heating up those areas too using that type of cold wrap. Um, 
Cold packs too on those areas as well can help cool down the body during, let's say, training. Like let's say you are overheating and you can't train anymore because of the heat, but you know that you, you should be going longer. You can cool down those glabrous skin areas um, with cold water. It doesn't have to be ice water. It can just it can be water that's 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, the body's 98.6. So it doesn't have to be like freezing cold water um, to actually you know drop down core body temperature. But you know, basically cooling during, let's say, weightlifting, um, that can increase the amount of reps and how basically much weight you can lift. So you can utilize cold during um, training to to lift more. There is a scenario where, where it may make some sense to, to utilize cold during training um, to actually be able to lift more and lift more weights, but also to lift a higher volume, right? More reps. So that'll give you more um, more benefits that way. If, if basically you're overheating, like at, like maybe closer to the middle or the end of your workout, if you're really overheated and that's preventing you from actually lifting more, then utilizing some of those glabrous skin cooling, you can use, again, the cold packs, you can use cold water on those areas, or obviously when you are running, you can't, it's going to be difficult to cool down the bottoms of your feet or the palms of your hands um, I mean, you could do the palms of the hands with like a, like a, uh, like a cool pack. And once it gets too cold, you should take it off because that will close the AVAs, which will then kind of sort of counter what you're trying to do. Um, it can actually increase core body temperature if you overcool the areas too fast. So that's why if you use like an ice pack, you, sometimes that's too cold and you, and after like 10 seconds, you pull away because you notice that you're not really, it's too much. Um, that's why, uh, you know, cold packs versus ice packs are actually better, in my opinion. You can hold them on for longer and get more cold, cool, cool off the blood that's flowing to the AVAs there better. So that's one way. Spraying the body with cold water than having a fan. So the evaporative um, effect, too, is really good at cooling the body as well. Um, so, that, so that's another way to cool the body. So we've talked about when you want to pre-cool, how to pre-cool, and how to cool during, let's say, lifting weights or, or during, let's say, like a hot soccer game or, um, you know, you're playing basketball outside. Basically, cold water, putting your feet in a little bit of cold water or, or cooling off those glabber skin areas is, is a very good way to allow you to continue to play outside, for example. So in those instances, it does make sense. I mean, I did it. I did that yesterday. I, I played basketball for like a half hour in the heat. It was 85 degrees out. And then I wanted to go for a run. Well, I knew that I wasn't going to really be able to go for that mile run that I wanted to do. So I took a, a one of those cold wraps. I filled up a little bit of like, like a bucket of water with ice. I put the wrap in the ice water and I wrapped it around my forehead and my ears, wrapped it tight like a ninja. And I was able to run that full mile in 85 degree Fahrenheit temperature, full sun out. Now, I was definitely overheated at the end of that and I used the ice bucket um, to put my feet in afterwards to cool me down a bit because I had really gone very hot. So there's, there's, and, and I didn't go into a cold plunge. I literally just put like, you know, my feet in two inches of cold water to kind of cool me down because I was so overheated. Like I was probably getting close to the 103, 104 temperature. Once you go over 103, you gotta be really careful, right? So I'm not, I'm not jumping into a cold plunge and preventing the muscle protein synthesis and the collagen synthesis that I want to happen with playing basketball and going on runs, I don't want those tendons to not have that stimulation. So I didn't jump into an ice bath, but I did put my feet into cold water to help cool me, cool my body down because I was definitely very overheated because I ran and played basketball outside in the heat at 85 degree Fahrenheit, which you, you got to be careful when you do those things. So that's sort of how you can utilize cold or how you should utilize cold. So you can utilize it during competition or prior to competition, you don't want to always pre-cool during training because you want to get those adaptive benefits. Heat acclimation is so important. So going into a hot bath like numerous times a day, three to seven days um, consistently will, will actually pre-cool your body. One of the best ways to pre-cool the body is actually to become heat acclimated. Okay, not a lot of people think about that. That's why heat is so much better, I think, than cold for many reasons, right? You're not, if you're jumping into an ice bath, you're inhibiting muscle protein synthesis, muscle strength gains, muscle hypertrophy gains. Whereas when you jump into a hot bath after exercise, you know, granted that you're not already super overheated, um, 
that's not going to cause that. And you're going to, you're going to get benefits of heat acclimation. And, and part of the benefit is a drop in your baseline core body temperature. So a way to pre-cool the body is to go into the sauna like every single day for a week or to go into a hot bath um, every single day for like a week. And doing that after exercise too is going to help with recovery as well. So, you know, the last post I did, a lot of people were like, well, when can I use like the cold plunge or ice baths? Cool. I like cool baths better than ice baths. I like bath temperature somewhere between 60 and 75 because it's more tolerable. Um, it might take a little bit longer, like maybe 45 minutes in that type of bath to pre-cool the body versus like an ice bath. But it, it, to me, it works better, um, a cool bath. So um, keep these strategies in mind. My book, Win Covers, like a lot of what I just said here, um, which is on Amazon, um, on how to improve athletic performance and recovery. But those are just some methods of how to use cold to improve performance.